Hello everybody, welcome back to Choices That Matter, and the sun went out. We are about to begin Arc 2-1. Our fate has led us to flying to Peru, so let's see what happens next. Good morning, teacher. The temperature this morning is a cool 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's freezing. The weather in Peru is expected to reach a comfortable 72 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and a cool 43 degrees Fahrenheit during the night. I suggest you pack for both eventualities, teacher. I groaned as I rolled out of bed. While waking up to Modi's smiling face was preferable to the bleeding of my old alarm, waking up before dawn was never pleasant. Someone's... Okay, there's like snow on the road outside my house and people are just flying down the road. That's not safe. Thank you, Modi. Is there any update in the news of Dolores or Professor Soul? Yes, teacher. The police have released Professor Soul's name to the public and have confirmed that it was a homicide. Miss Montague's case has been labeled a domestic disturbance and her whereabouts are still unknown. They have not, as of yet, connected the two cases together. Best they don't, Modi. Packing the few things that I would need on my trip did not take long. I had learned recently to pack fast and light. Once I was done, it was a simple matter of opening the safe I hid behind my bedside dresser and storing my few valu valuables away. Do you think we'll ever know who killed Professor Soul, or why? We know why, we may never know who though. We need to keep moving forward, Modi. Maybe this will actually state why, and then I can finally know the secret. So we'll go with the first one. Putting everything else in the safe, I shut it firmly and replaced the bedside dresser and stand. Should I call a taxi for you, teacher? Not just yet, Modi. I still got some time. Opening my dilapidated fridge, I searched for the last of the takeout I had bought last week and put it in the microwave. Not an exciting meal, but it would be better than what the airport had. I mean, what? That doesn't sound fresh. I wrinkled my nose at the thought. I had been in more airplanes recently than I ever had in my life. The sun's three-hour vanishing act. It turned out wasn't just a cause for panic, it was a re realization of our vulnerability as humans. Our existence could be gone in a moment. It was my job to find a solution. The microwave chimed and I ate my stale meal in silence, leaning against the kitchen counter. Modi buzzed on my wrist. Teacher, I must insist. My GPS informs me that if you don't leave soon, you will not arrive in time to check your luggage. Alright, Modi, let's see what Peru has to offer. Don't worry so much, Modi. You'll go gray early. Now let's go with the first one. Modi, as always, was correct. By the time my taxi arrived at the airport, I had to rush to make it to my gate in time. My rush was only made worse by the droves of people who had decided that the end of the world was the perfect time to go on that long-awaited holiday. More than one person had gone bankrupt since the incident. Still, soon, I was in my allocated seat and listening to the usual warning from the flight attendant to switch all devices to flight mode. I have switched myself onto flight mode as well, teacher. Your flight is scheduled to take 7 hours and 15 minutes. Should I compile a playlist for that time frame? Yes, thank you, Modi. I plugged in my headphones to Modi's slot and rested my head against the back of my seat. I would never get used to the vo the waiting. Teacher, how many Modicon devices are there in the world? Very few Modi. Most people cannot afford one. None like you. Oh, that's so cute. I'm gonna say one. None like you, Modi. Thank you, teacher. Oh, I got a little hearts for his eyes. Though my system would indicate that you are being kind, but incorrect. I will play your music now. My, prefer my preferred music began playing in my ears, and I relaxed as the force of takeoff pushed me into the back of my seat. 
I closed my eyes and tried to rest as well as I could for the long flight. Modi kept my music varied for a few hours before I drifted off to sleep. The plane touching ground jolted me awake. We arrived in Lima, teacher. Our connecting flight leaves in 47 minutes and has a duration of approximately one hour. Sighing, I swiftly collected my hand luggage and headed down the stairs to the tarmac. Peruvians in traditional dress greeted us as we passed through the, their customs. Many of them sported depictions of a sun god, and I made a mental note to look up their significance in the local culture. Oh, isn't this exciting? I heard they slaughter 100 llamas, you know. A middle-aged woman in front of me whispered loudly to her friend, who nodded excitedly, twisting a Taurus poncho in her hands. Bless you, Winnie. Where are you, Winnie? Bless you, Winnie. I frowned at the two. They pointed excitedly at a poster promoting Inti Raimi, some kind of festival to do with the sun. My apologies if I mispronounced that. I distinctly needed a restroom, but I was suddenly very curious about why these two were here. Listen to the odd couple, find a restroom. I mean, yeah, let's listen to the odd couple. I stepped closer to the older ladies, paying close attention to the- Oh, I just saw something behind me, and that was my cat jumping up. Oh, my camera's a little slanted. Okay. We'll ignore this. I stepped closer to the older ladies, paying close attention to the poster to avoid looking like I was eavesdropping. Oh, it's just perfect, said the chatty one to her poncho-wearing friend. After that awful business with the sun, maybe people will take this year more seriously. I always did say, didn't I, Fran, that the Incas had to know something we didn't. Just look at their beautiful buildings. I'm so glad we decided to do, to do this, aren't you, Fran? The lady in the poncho, Fran, nodded excitedly. An announcement echoed through the airport that the next flight, mine, was ready for boarding, and the woman, the women hurried off. I followed them at a slower pace. That plow outside's very loud. The 50-minute flight from Lima to Cusco was uneventful and was certainly more comfortable than the alternative, a 20-hour journey by bus through the mountains. I would have probably enjoyed that. I made my way up the concourse and joined the throng of passengers waiting by the luggage carousel. My small green rucksack appeared and I quickly slipped it on my back, making my way over to immigration. A quick stamp on my passport with no questions asked was a perfect way to start a rather impromptu visit to South America. Now I needed to work out how to reach the center of this supposedly beautiful city to the hotel Dolores had booked. Hire a car, head towards a waiting taxi. Now let's try a taxi. I slid into the back of the nearest taxi and battled with my baggage to find my paperwork and the name of the hotel Dolores had booked. The name of the hotel is Santa Maria Hotel, teacher. You got one of those gadgets, huh? My daughter wants one, but simple taxi drivers like us can't afford one. The taxi driver was twisted around in the front seat, looking at me with a warm smile. Her accent pronounced her to be as foreign to this country as I was, but she seemed at ease with her surroundings. I gave her a tired smile and told her the name of the hotel tucking my baggage away again. What brings you to the City of the Sun, mate? She asked, expertly navigating the streets of Cusco. My company sent me here to try and figure out why the sun went out. Just decided I needed a holiday. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be giving that information out. Just decided I needed a holiday. Just decided I needed a holiday. Seems like a lot of people had the same idea. She nodded as if this was a common tale these days. Yeah, I don't know this person, so I don't want to give that information out. I rubbed my neck, dreaming of a bed and a proper rest. These last couple of days, I've picked up enough travelers that are here to see the Inti Raimi Festival. The hotels are filled to the brim because of it. You were lucky to get a room. I have a very good travel agent. Had, maybe now, who knew what happened to Dolores after I had left. Still, she always did have a way of getting out of tricky messes. 
The streets of Cusco were beautiful, to be sure. The buildings were an eclectic mix of Spanish and Incan influences, one built upon the other. It wasn't long before we reached our destination, the Santa Maria Hotel. It was a quaint place, not too pricey, not too cheap. It was perfect for my purposes. I thanked the driver and opened the door, ready for my travel to be over. A gust of wind took me by surprise, and I wrinkled my nose against the dust. Ignore the wind and hustle inside? Asked the taxi driver to get nearer to the door. No, 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 we'll just ignore it. In my hesitation, I paused long enough to notice a man standing in the shadows. Something about his stature made shivers go down my spine, so I eased back into the car. Oh no, is this scary? Is this scary? Is everything alright, my friend? The taxi driver watched me in the rearview mirror. I couldn't take my eyes off the man in the shadows. I don't want to, I don't want to read anymore. I don't want to read anymore. Suddenly, he shifted, and I could clearly see a gun in a holster attached to his belt as well as a golden glint to his eyes. Oh no, I'm next. The events back home made it clear that I couldn't stay here. It was too much of a coincidence. That man was waiting for me. I could feel it. I closed the taxi door. I can't stay here. Can you take me to another hotel, please? The driver actually turned in her seat to make eye contact. I told you, there isn't anywhere else. Are you in some kind of trouble, mate? I chewed my lip, wondering if I should tell her the truth. I didn't even know her name. Her eyes softened as she watched me. Look, I've got a spare bedroom. You're welcome to use it for a small boarding fee until the festival has passed. What are you paying here? I'll match it. It seemed hinky, staying at a stranger's house, but given the situation, I had little choice. I agreed. She smiled and offered her hand in a firm shake. The name's Sharon. Welcome to Peru. Is this wise, teacher? I don't think so. I feel like the, the you don't know if the cab driver is working with the person with the gun. We know very little of Miss Sharon or Cusco. We'll keep our wits about us, Modi, and be careful. We sometimes have to trust the goodness of people. Yeah, we'll do the top one. Oh, Modi's face. Oh, I'm so yeah, that's... <laughs> that's the face I'm making on the inside. Sharon's house wasn't too far away, but the long hours and stress were catching up to me. My eyelids were too heavy to take in much of the city during the ride. Once we arrived, she showed me to her spare room in the simple, clean bathroom before leaving me to my own devices. I sorely wanted a shower, but I settled for washing my face before falling onto the single bed and dreaming dark dreams. The sun was still high when I woke up. I took the much-needed shower and wandered into the kitchen where Sharon was sitting, chewing some leaves from a bag. The nice thing about having a sudden border is I don't have to be in that bloody hot taxi all day. She told me, grinning. Smiling back at her, I sank into a seat at the table, feeling lightheaded. Are you okay, teacher? Sharon gave me a knowing look. You look like a tourist. Here, chew this. It's coca leaves. Illegal where I come from, but it'll give you the right kind of sea legs for this altitude. I took some of the leaves and studied them, curious, before popping them in my mouth. What are these leaves? Illegal? So, what's your deal, Sharon? I don't know if I want to open a can of worms with the bottom one. What's your deal? I don't know. That, she might take that the wrong way. So, we'll just go with the top one. Ah, uh, they're just something to take the edge off. Harmless. Most travel blogs actually recommend eating them. What was it I once read? Ah, uh, chew like the Incas. The taste was bitter, but she was right. I was already feeling a little less lightheaded. I made a mental note to buy my own bag at the soonest convenience. Most places will sell the tea, too, she told me, indicating the tea caddy sitting on our bench. If you're interested in the Inti Raimi, there will be plenty of places you'll find that can help you out. That scared me.
Modi vibrated on my wrist. Modi, can't you just stop vibrating? <laughs> it seems that she is correct about Coca Leaves, teacher. Just be sure not to take them back with you. The tea is legal, however. So what's your deal, Sharon? What is in tea, Raimi? Let's learn about this. Sharon stood and walked over to a tiny bookshelf in the corner of the kitchen, grabbing what looked like a children's book and bringing it back. Inti Raimi was apparently the biggest festival in the Incan calendar. Something about the rulers being related to the sun gods or that kind of thing. I flipped through the pages of what was indeed a children's picture book. It was in Spanish, so I couldn't read it. But as with most kids' books, the pictures told most of the story. Somehow, it lasted many hundreds of years, she continued, even after the Incas were no more. I stopped at a particular page, depicting the Incan ruler trying to convince the sun to return to them. This would have taken place during the winter solstice, when the sun would seem more distant, more, the sun would seem more distant in the sky. If this is what they did, when they thought the sun was wander wandering away, what did they do when there was an eclipse? I asked Sharon, looking up to her. She shrugged. I'm the wrong person to ask. I just know the modern story. There's an old historian across the way who knows more about these things, but talking to him is a bit hard. He only knows Quechua, the native language, and rough Spanish. I, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I'm sorry if I pronounced all of this wrong. I flicked through a few more pages before settling once again on the same page that had caught my eye earlier. It was an impossible coincidence that I was here just before the Incan Festival of the Sun. That had to be why I was sent here. But for what purpose? Surely it was also superstitious and myths. Sharon sat across from me, smiling pleasantly. My flight or fight instinct was still in effect, and I was cautious about letting her know too much. On the other hand, I did need some kind of translator to meet this historian, and she was obviously comfortable with the culture and the area. I'd like to meet the historian, and... I can find my own way with a few directions. Would you care to come with me as a translator? Sure, well, let's ask her. She rubbed her hands together, collecting her bag of coca leaves and standing. All right, grab what you need. I'll be out front warming up the car. She's a bit old these days. And with that, she left the room. I rubbed my eyes while the coca leaves helped with the altitude sickness and the sleep restored my batteries. I still felt like I was a step behind and a dollar short. It took a moment to grab my bag from the spare bedroom and meet Sharon in the car. She gave me a tooth-filled grin when I jumped into the passenger side, and we peeled off into the streets of Cusco. All around us, the city was getting ready for the festival. Lights were being hung in the main streets. People in traditional dress were swarming amongst the store tourists, trying to earn their Peruvian soul, the local currency. Dotted amongst everything else were the depictions of sun gods, the Incan royal family, and strangely, llamas. I tapped on Modi's face. Modi, what's the llama's place within the festival of Inti Raimi? Before Modi could reply, Sharon piped up from the bedside. From- Wow. Before Modi could reply, Sharon piped up from beside me. Oh, they used to sacrifice them back in the day. Whole packs of them, selected for their brown coloring. She smiled pleasantly as we wound through the streets with ease. Actually, teacher, a gathering of llamas is referred to as a herd, but otherwise Miss Sharon is correct. <laughs> she looked mad. I smiled at Modi's petulance. The programmers did a good job of recreating human, in human emotion. I assume they don't do this anymore. Sharon nodded. They still make a show of it, but they're only symbols. Puppets, I think. I couldn't get that close the year I went. The crowds were crazy. I'm actually surprised no one wanted to actually kill some of the beasts this year, after all that nonsense with the sun going out. I raised my eyebrows, surprised. Nonsense? 
My life had been consumed with the hows and whys of the incident, and a taxi driver dismissed it as nonsense. She slowed at a set of lights, and almost as if on cue, a man led a brown <laughs> a man led a brown llama across an intersection. Sharon watched it casually. Maybe I was wrong. Does Australian culture have any lore about sun gods? Can you explain more about Spanish Incan beliefs and cultures? Let's ask a little about the Australian one real quick. Does Australian culture have any lore about the ending of the world or sun gods? I asked. Well, I assume not. You're a young country. She gave a wry smile, checking her rearview mirror. We're a young country, but to think we don't have culture is a bit laughable. Well, before the English arrived to turn us into a prison island, the land belonged to the Aborigines. They have their dream time. Dream time, I asked. Dream time is where their belief system comes from. In dreaming, they find reason for things they have no reason. They are very spiritual, connected to their land. That being said, I can only remember what I learned in primary school, she shrugged. I nodded, letting it go. Stopped again at a new set of traffic lights, I suddenly wondered if maybe it would have been quicker to walk in this frenzy. I don't know what people are getting so worked up about, though, honestly. Her tone was offhand, and I looked at her, incredulous. Are you kidding? The sun went out. Literally. How can you not be afraid? Yeah, I'll ask the, la the bottom one. The top one seems a little, uh... The top one seems a little, like, aggressively judgmental, and I don't want to piss her off. She's she's offering to help, so I'm just gonna ask the bottom one. She shrugged. It came back on, no harm, no foul. You can throw it back and forth all you want. But it happened, we're all still here, and life moves on. She'll be right. She'll be right, I repeated, open-mouthed. I don't mean to alarm you, mate, but it seems that we're being followed. Friends of yours? Uh-oh. Before I could turn to look, an SUV suddenly slammed into the back of Sharon's taxi, skidding us forward several feet. I braced myself against the console just in time. Sharon wasn't so lucky. Oh no, that sucks. Ooh, b ooh. Bloody hell. She took the wheel, and the tires screeched as she took off again. Teacher, we are considerably above the legal speed limit. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> As we raced away towards the end of the street, the next set of lights turned orange. The traffic on either side inched forwards. There was a tiny side street on the right, barely big enough for Sharon's car to fit through. Her eyes flicked between the two options, gripping the steering wheel tightly. Oh no, don't make me pick. So you can turn down the side street, which... There's not a lot of space, so if you, like, just turn very fast that's not going to be good but you also go through the red light and the cars are already inching forward that's not good either Ooh, i don't want anybody to get hurt well if you turn down the side street it didn't say that there was anybody there there's no other cars it didn't mention i don't think it did so we're just gonna go with the side street i mean ooh, that's a tough call because I can see both scenarios being really bad. She swerved, tail spinning into the tiny side street. The back end smacked into the corner as the car squeezed in. A side mirror snapped off, but Sharon didn't seem to care, revving ahead with a wicked grin on her face. Let's outrun a maymate. That chunky bugger can't go so fast down here. She cackled maniacally, deftly avoiding debris in, her, in our way. Damn it! <laughs> Modi vibrated on my wrist. Don't do that. Teacher, these might be the same people who killed Professor Soul and broke into Miss Montague's house. I would advise against fo allowing them to capture you. Is Modi saying these things out loud? Like, can Sharon hear what she's saying? Or is it just text? Thank you, Modi. I'll remember that. Sharon cackled again, approaching the end of the lane, a decision once more in our way. We could head right towards the city and lose the SUV persistently making its way down the lane, 
The left led away from the busy streets towards the outskirts in the direction of the historian's house. Sharon looked at me. I mean, we do gotta get, get away from these people, so if we have to go the wrong way just to get rid of them, it might be worth it, but then if we're further away, they could catch up to us again when we finally do go in the correct direction. I feel like the outskirts is a bad idea, though, because then that's just, like, less witnesses. These people have no problem killing me. So, we'll just have to take the long way for, long way for our safety. To the turn right to the city. Sharon skidded around on the roads like a devil, obviously talented, but also enjoying the rush. The glint in her eyes betrayed how much she enjoyed the danger. I craned my head around to try and catch sight of the SUV behind us. It was still within eyesight, but Sharon created a larger gap with each passing moment. I have to inform you, teacher, that Miss Sharon is breaking several road rules right now. Ordinarily, I would inform the authorities, but I can understand if you do not want me to. However, this is making me highly anxious. I braced myself against the floor of the car with my feet. I actually agreed with Modi. Sharon drove through the city at an alarming rate and people were leaping out of the way of her speeding tires. She twisted down so many different streets I hardly knew where we were in comparison to where we started. We ended up in what looked like an industrial district and when I looked behind us I couldn't see the SUV anywhere. I can't see them, I shouted and Sharon whooped, fist pumping the air. She twitched the wheel suddenly and threw us into the car park of a factory site, tucking us out of sight at the very end of the area. I breathed a sigh of relief that no one seemed to be at work today. Sharon smacked the wheel in satisfaction. I think that'll do it. I don't reckon they could have followed us through all of that. That was a hoot. She grinned wildly. I smiled myself, the adrenaline and relief making me feel elated. They know Miss Sharon's car now, teacher. There is a chance that they might be able to find us again. I suggest that you be cautious in how you proceed. As much as Modi was right, I knew that if people were following me, then it wouldn't be long before they found the historian. Time wasn't on my side. Sharon was still chortling beside me, cheeks rosy. You ready to head over to the old geezer's house or what? Does Cusco have a public library that I could utilize? Just until I know it's safe to proceed? Sharon raised her eyebrows. Well, sure, but I thought you were in a hurry. I chewed it over. Go to the public library, head directly to the historian. I don't know what I would do in real life. I guess we would go to the public library for right now because I don't want anything to happen to the historian. And also, I mean, it's a public library. You could probably read about some of this stuff there. And get some information anyway, so you get extra information between the library and the historian. So maybe we'll go to the library. Well, we are going to the library. Sharon dropped me at the front of the library and leaned across the seat to address me as I climbed out of the car. I'll keep driving around a bit just in case the buggers are still out looking. I nodded, glancing around the street. I hope she's not in any danger. Be careful. She simply left before turning and driving away teacher there is a software update available for me. May I update? A software update? I started trudging up the steps to the library. What's in the update, Modi? The ability to connect to local wireless networks, teacher. Now's not a good time, Modi. Sure, let's do it, Modi. I feel like if he does if Modi does that, then it's easier to find me. So now's not a good time, Modi. Maybe next time, then. I felt bad about not letting Modi update, but now really wasn't a good time to be messing around with Modi's operating system. I reached the top of the steps and entered the library. It was bright inside the foyer, but I could see that the bookshelves were darker and more protected. Teacher, I have looked up several books that may help you in your research written in English. I will display them for you now. Modi's list was comprehensive, and I picked out a few of the top-listed titles from the stocks. In short order, I had found myself a table and settled in to wait until Sharon returned. 
I just heard the plow truck drive by. Looking through the index pages of the books, I thought about what I had already learned and what I still wanted to know. Start with N.T. Raimi, start with Peru's Sun God. I already have a little bit of information about the N.T. Raimi. Let's start with the Sun God. A lot of the passages I found linked both N.T. Raimi and their Sun God. It seemed impossible to search either one separately. In N.T. Raimi 100, brown llamas were sacrificed to the Sun God, N.T., to convince him to return back to the Earth. It was in line with everything else I had learned. In one passage, it, it went... In one passage, it mentioned that Cuzco was the main site for celebration because of the architecture of the place. But it didn't go into detail. I made a note to look for it particularly in another book. The Incas had revered many gods before the Spaniards turned up to redecorate the place. Inti was the highest of all apart from their creator god. I made a note to look into them as well. Other than that, there was nothing Inti Raimi could teach me about why the sun god why the sun had gone out or how to prevent it from happening again. Not scientifically, anyway. I decided to move on to another subject after checking the clock. There must be a reason I had been sent here. Discover Cusco as a region, perform a wider search on the Incan gods. I think we'll uh, look into the region because there must be a reason why it's happening specifically here. So there must be something about the land itself, maybe, that's got an answer? I don't know. Cusco was 3,400 meters above sea level. No wonder I had altitude sickness. Apparently, it was remodeled in the 15th century by Inca... Oh, God help me. By Inca Pachacutec to become the capital city of the Tawantasuyu Empire. Tawantasuyu Empire. That's the best I'm gonna do, I'm sorry. It was a religious and governmental epicenter built with purpose and exacting measurements. Many structures included rooms for the royal families, forming an unprecedented, unprecedented symbolic compound which was still viable today. The Temple of the Sun, also known as Kurikancha, was a central point in the architecture when it was being built and could still be seen today in the foundations of the building. It was a large part of the Inti Raimi Festival. Cusco had been referred to as the City of the Sun because of the temple and the fact that the royal family had lived there. Here. The royal family had lived here. The family themselves thought that they were directly related to the sun god Inti. Investigate further into the Incan gods. Investigate the origins of the temple. Yeah, I'm gonna do the temple. Kuri Kancha was the most revered temple in the whole of the Incan Empire. The Incas were known for gold. The Incas were known for gold and the temple was no different. It was outfitted with the best. The walls were covered with sheets of solid gold. As with most things, the invading culture had destroyed what was there. The Spaniards built the Church of Santo Domingo on the site, tearing down the existing temple and using its foundations to create the cathedral. Still, even with all that, the temple had been through worse, including earthquakes and other natural disasters. It was reportedly now a cracked and crumbling place, but it was a testament to the Incan Empire that it stood, that still stood. Tucked into the pages of a bigger book, I found a cryptic note. It mentioned that the temple was placed for more reasons than central worship. I had a feeling. I frowned, studying the yellowed note. I had a feeling there was something more with it. It looked like it had been ripped out of another book, but it was so torn and old that I couldn't make anything else out. Glancing around, I slipped into my pocket, deciding to take it with me. A small image in one of the textbooks showed blood on the floor of the temple, captioned, 
a sacrifice for the eclipse. I frowned and wrote it down to investigate later. It also seemed that the Incan royal family would stay there for long periods of time, even living there. I saw the cat in the corner of my eye, scared the hell out of me. Where did I leave off? Coupled with the belief that they thought they were descended from the sun god, it made sense. Del delve into the relation between the royal family and the gods. Discover what happens when there's an eclipse. Ooh, I want to know both badly. I was excited to get to learn more about the royal family, and I also was excited to learn about the eclipse. Ooh, that sucks. I want to do both, and I, I don't know if I'll have a chance to learn about both. I think I'll look into the Eclipse, though. This sounds a lot like, what's that called? That movie that Mel Gibson made, Apocalypto. But that was with the Mayans, not the Incas. Uh, I won't go into that. But, uh... Let me see what happens when there's an Eclipse. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. I was just starting a chapter about the human sacrifices that would take place if there was an Eclipse when Modi hummed on my wrist. Okay, see, so yeah, in Apocalypto, it didn't happen... When there was an eclipse, they were doing human sacrifices and then stopped when there was an eclipse. Spoiler. I should have said spoiler at first, my bad. Miss Sharon is outside ready to collect you, teacher. My cat's meow. MJ, you okay? Oh, it's... Oh, it's almost dinner time. I'm almost done with this, I'm sure. I've been doing this for a while now. MJ, I've been doing- I've been doing this for a while now, okay? I'll, I'll feed you in just a moment. Cursing under my breath, I gathered up the books scattered around my table, as well as my notes on scraps of paper. Okay, my cat. My cat made it very known that I cannot miss dinner time for him. So... Oh, I hate how the light is reflecting my eyes. So, um, I will be right back. I have to go feed my cat. Before he unleashes hell. I'm back. Luckily, I fed them just in time. Happily, I was able to borrow the books without too much hassle, even though I knew no Spanish. The older man smiled when he saw what I was taking out. I assumed they saw a lot of my kind coming through in the lead up to Inti Raimi. I hobbled down the stairs to Sharon's taxi, and she pushed the door open from the inside. Bloody hell, looking for a bit of light reading, are you? I grinned, her spirit infectious. Something like that. No trouble? She winked, not a whisker of that SUV. Buckle up, I'll get you to the historian's place in no time. Why do you never call him by his name? I can't pronounce it. Soon enough, Sharon slowed down next to an old-style Lincoln house, and I stared at it, open-mouthed. There were several... several... <laughs> there were several police cars in the front of his house, lights on. An officer was standing in the open doorway, talking on the phone. Sharon kept creeping past and then pulled up around the corner, putting her taxi in park. Teacher, it is highly unlikely that this is a coincidence. Sharon shook her head, reading Modi over my shoulder. Ah, so I guess it's all text. Your gadget is right, mate. If you need to see the bloke, I understand, but I'm out. You're cold. <laughs> Don't blame her. Go up to the house, it's worth the risk. Play it safe, stay with Sharon, and do more research. Um, I think if you go up to the house, you're gonna have to deal with the police. And that's probably a bad idea, so I would say go back with Sharon. Sharon nodded and revved the engine again, moving away from the historian's house. Because it... he's bound to find information from the stuff that he took from the library. In short order, we arrived back at her house, and she helped me carry in the books from the library. Curious, she watched me while I sat up on the floor of her living room, books around me. Suddenly, she sat across from me, grabbing a book. What should I be looking for? 
I weighed my options, but couldn't see any harm in it. Anything unusual to do with the sun, particularly about it going out for an extended amount of time. She nodded and we worked in silence for a few hours. Teacher, an update has been posted about Miss Montague. Her case has been upgraded to missing persons, though it is still unconnected to Professor <laughs> Professor Soul. I nodded, distracted. Sharon looked up from her own book. I've never heard anything about this before. Could this be something you can use? Sharon passed me the book she was holding, laying it open to a page with an intricate drawing. The writing around it wasn't in English or Spanish, but it seemed to be indicating that a cog-shaped crevice existed, and that cogs similar to this would cause it to function in some way. you never seen anything like this before? I asked. Sharon shrugged, not outside of an action-adventure movie. Modi, get ready for a targeted internet search. I was gonna say, just use Google for all of this. I hesitated. Would it be more prudent to get Modi to do a wider internet search? Or just focus on the cog? Or you know, one or the other. Okay, I didn't read that in the right tone. Research the cog in relation to the temple. Research the wider topic of Auntie Raimi in connection with the temple. Yeah, I feel like the cog at this point... Of course, teacher. Searching now. Found it. There have been other schematics like these found to be connected to Curry Concha, though I can find no source describing how. An article states that they believe there is a similar. An article states that they believe there is a series of tunnels under the temple. The site itself is not reputable. They also have mentioned a Bigfoot. Okay. I sighed, too. Tired to be dis- I sighed. Too tired to be disappointed. It looked down at the book. I looked down at the book. I looked down at the books around me and pondered my next move. Sharon, what do you think? Find anything else, Sharon? Let's see if Sharon found anything else. Well, I haven't found anything else in this lot of termite food that's any use. Sharon looked at me with a twinkle in her eye and a sly look on her face. It was grouse, though, wasn't it? All... It was grouse, though, wasn't it? All that excitement running through the streets, being in a car chase, being in car chases. To be honest, for the first time, I'm a bit curious now about how this is going to end. She shifted, looking at all the books around her living room. It seems to be that everything connects back to the temple. Inti Raimi and this cog thing. It all leads back to there. She chewed the idea around in her head for a moment, biting her lower lip in concentration. I just realized that I have the volume off on this game. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. Here's the breakdown. The anti- Here's the breakdown. The Inti Raimi festival kicks off tomorrow with the parades through the city leading to the temple where the main event takes place. I nodded, remembering a booklet detailing this year's festivities that I had looked through earlier. On the other hand, if you head over early, on the other hand, if you head over earlier, you might be able to have a better look at the temple without all the commotion that accompanies the parade. Miss Sharon is right, teacher. However, if the people chasing us are also going to the temple, it is safer to be in the festival parade where there is a crowd. Sharon cocked her head to the side and considered me. So what's it going to be? Head straight to the temple or join in the festival? Go to the temple, go to the festival. Yeah, I, th I think... The, they, you know, so far, whoever has been after me, they've always been... You know... They've always been right there. So, the, you know, the odds are they know to go to the temple. So I'm probably better off going when there's a crowd. So I'll go to the festival. Sharon's mouth twisted, excitement flooding her face. Hiding amongst the locals to gain the intel, huh? Sounds like you could use a friend. I frowned, cautious of the sudden change in attitude. Look, I've had a ba- Look, I've had a ball today, she explained. More fun than backyard cricket on New Year's Eve. 
I wouldn't mind coming along for the ride to see if you can save our bloody broken son. I weighed my options. It would be nice to have someone watch my back. I don't want to drag you into it. I mean, I do want her with me. It would be nice to have someone with me, but at the same time, I feel like the right thing to say is I don't want to drag you into it to let them know that, you know, this could be a burden. So, I don't want to drag you into it. I shook my head, decided, this is my business. I don't want to drag you into it. She sulked, but said nothing else. Oh, I was trying to be polite. I thought she'd insist. Oh, well. Back in her spare bedroom, I readied myself for bed with a bone-deep weariness. I fell down onto the bed, my muscles spasms, my muscles spasming, as they finally rested after my long trial. Even though my body was exhausted, it took me far too long to relax. The events of the last few days playing through my head. Slowly, though, my thoughts became less coherent, and I began to drift finding a small amount of peace once more. Arc 2 completed. You and 22% of players will be joining the festivities. Okay, well, I really thought when I said I didn't want to drag her into it, I thought I was just being polite and that she would insist, so I guess that's what I get for not just being direct and saying I wanted her with me. Well, there you have it. That is the end of episode 2, and we will continue on to the next episode very soon. This story is getting very interesting. I can't wait to see what happens next um, when we finally get to the temple. So, uh, I have no idea where this is going, but I am invested in this. So, I hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, have a great day. See you next time.